Tori, may I ask you if um, it, it, the majority of the problem is black market guns, why are you going after legal gun owners, you know, legal guns, ammunition, gun clubs in Toronto? Well, I think in the case of, of, uh, of, of the city of Toronto and the urban area of the city of Toronto, I ask myself the question, and I think a lot of people in the city are asking themselves the question, why do people need to have guns in the city of Toronto at all? I mean, police officers have them, we understand that. Uh, Brinks truck drivers have them, we understand that. But I think that the rules today, I acknowledge, allow other people to have handguns, and we're now posing the question, given the number of those that get stolen or end up in the wrong place, and given that people buy them legally and then in some cases traffic them, is it going to be better off for us not to have gun, handguns in the city of Toronto so that they can't be trafficked, they can't be stolen because they're not here. And the fundamental one is, is why do people need to have guns in the city of Toronto? Welcome back. One final point before we go tonight. London Mayor City Khan is waging a war on pocket knives. Really? Because that's going to solve London's problem with murder and terrorism. London Mayor Sadiq Khan says, there is no reason for anybody to carry a knife. Mayor Tory, you know, we can get an illegal gun in the space of one hour, as I understand it, from law enforcement. Taking guns away from legal, law-abiding gun owners, I don't see how that would address this problem. Well, Banning guns in the UK obviously worked to reduce crime and violence, didn't it? Oh, no, wait. Banning guns did not work. Even after the UK government banned guns, London still managed to have a higher murder rate than New York City in the month of February of this year. Even so, Mayor Khan would rather blame the weapon than empower his people to defend themselves against lunatics and murderers. But I think, to me, the question of whether we could have a city without guns, uh, I think we could live quite well without them in the city of Toronto, legal or, or illegal, that we could just live without them. And that's all that was being said yesterday by a lot of people, including a lot of citizens. We are learning more details about an incident on Parliament Hill today during the changing of the guard. One man with a knife was taken into custody. Apparently, there's been a wild upswing in the amount of murder in London. Well, that's not a tremendous shock, considering that the demographics of London have changed, that the policing in London has changed wildly, uh, that the mayor of London City, Khan, is really terrible at his job. But the murder rate in London now outstrips the murder rate in New York, which is pretty incredible, actually. Right? After a long period of steady declines in violent crime, the city has averaged in excess of three killings a week so far this year. More than 50 people have been killed in London since the start of 2018. The total for all of 2017, a year when the city suffered multiple deadly terrorist attacks, was 116. Criminal. Person, but let me talk to you about gun violence, if I can, and why today, like many days, but today in particular, is such an important opportunity to have this conversation about gun control and what you want people to know. Well, I think um, most Canadians don't understand how much we've gone backwards in terms of gun control. And, for example, we keep uh, comparing ourselves to the United States, thinking that our laws are much better, but in reality... Uh, most of the guns used, the, the military assault weapons used uh, in, the, in, the shoot, in the mass shootings that we see south of the borders, are legal in Canada. And I'll just show you the picture of just one example. Um, this is, this is uh, a weapon that was just recently approved by the RCMP for sale in Canada, and on top of it as an unrestricted weapon. So these weapons are legal in Canada. Um, there's more and more of them coming on the market, and they're being approved under a Liberal government that promised to get tough on guns. So I do love what they're now talking about in London. They're now talking about banning knives. No joke. So they're using the exact same logic they used about guns, and now they're applying it to knives. So Sadiq Khan has announced a broad new knife control policy designed to keep, quote-unquote, weapons of war out of the hands of Londoners looking to cause other, others harm. The UK Parliament is considering bills that would restrict the manufacture and purchase of kitchen cooking knives. Wendy Sucre is the president of Coalition for Gun Control. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. What is your reaction to the US National Rifle Association's call for armed guards at every school in the nation? It's clearly an effort to deflect uh, the attention that's focused on them as the principal facilitators of 
gun violence by blocking every reasonable effort to strengthen gun control in the U.S. Uh, but the reality is, last year in the United States, there were 12,000 gun murders. Here in Canada, there were 200, and in the United Kingdom, there were 40. Incredible, Where actually. Right? The, the murder rate in Britain has always been extraordinarily low. This is why when people say, well, you know, you ban guns in Britain, that's why the murder rate is low. The murder rate was low before the bans on guns. And the murder rate in Britain was always quite low. Where you have stronger gun laws, it's much tougher for dangerous people to get access to guns. And the gun lobby in Canada, working with the National Rifle Association, has done everything in its power, not just to block, but to weaken Canada's gun laws. What do you think explains North America's obsession with guns? So it's very clear that there's a paradox. The countries which have strong gun laws tend to have lower rates of gun owners, and it tends to be easier to strengthen laws. The United States has almost as many guns as people, and it's very, very difficult, given their political system and given the power of the NRA. So again, it ain't about the knives, folks. Maybe you ought to look at the people who are wielding the knives. Maybe you ought to be looking at the people who are actually performing the asset attacks. But since we're not allowed to do that, we're going to crack down on knives, and then we'll crack down on fists, and then we'll, we'll crack down on any blunt object in your home. We won't be allowed to have blunt objects. Soon, we'll end up all sitting in blank rooms with no furniture, because anything can be used as, maybe, maybe pillows, but no, we can use pillows for suffocation. So eventually, we're all just walking around like John Travolta in The Bubble Boy, because that presumably will stop crime, not actually targeting criminals. Pretty amazing stuff, but demonstrates what happens when an entire civilization loses their mind and stops targeting criminality and starts instead pretending that the tools of criminality are more important than the criminals themselves.